Limit stolen bases can really impact the outcome of baseball games. How many times have you seen a team win by a walk-off with a dink or bloop hit? More often than not, a stolen base set that all up. So today, we're going to learn ways to limit stolen bases so you're not that pitcher walking off the field with your head down. What's good, everybody? My mic is on. We're not muting this stream, okay? Uh, Appreciate everybody being here. What's good? I'm Percy Garner, and I'm a former Major League pitcher with the Cleveland Guardians, and I'm here to help you be the best pitcher that you possibly could be. Now, thank you for joining me on this journey. Remember, we must crawl before we walk, and uh, I'm just trying to share all the information I know with you guys. Appreciate all the love and support. Subscribers been going up slowly but surely, but we're getting there. And thanks to all the people who have been sharing uh, the posts, the videos, um, and just showing love to the channel. Still on that journey, guys, but uh, I appreciate it. If you're enjoying or liking or learning anything from this content that I'm making, please subscribe, please like, and so you're notified next time we go live or upload another video, hit the notification bell, okay? So, again, appreciate everyone being here. Today we're talking about holding runners, controlling this, the run game, preventing stolen bases or limiting stolen bases, stolen bases. And it's kind of ironic because this wasn't a strong part of my game when I was playing. And uh, I really didn't learn how to hold runners until like, you know, later in my career. And, and I still struggle with it. And we're going to talk about, um, you know, knowing the type of situation that you're in. We're going to talk about mixing up your looks, whether you're throwing over or holding. And then we're also going to ta- uh, talk about working on your time to the plate. You know, making sure you're not taking all day to get the ball to the plate and helping your catcher out. So we're going to start with knowing the situation. Now, there's a lot of things that go into, go into this. Of course, you got to know if the runner is fast. Um, but more importantly, when there's close games, there's a lot of other things that you got to take into account. And, you know, this is why baseball is, is a little bit different than other sports, but close games, I just talked about in the intro, you don't want a blooper or a dink or any of those type of hits, you know, beating you because technically you just did your job as a pitcher. So, uh, we want to make sure that when we uh, execute our pitches that we're rewarded for it. So close games, just for an example, say you're in a close game, say a one-run game, and you come out to pitch uh, towards the end of the game, and you know obviously you don't want to give up a run. And you lead off, maybe you walk the guy or he gets a hit. So you got a runner on first base. Now in your mind, you're thinking... I cannot let this guy get the second because then all it takes is a dink or a bloop to score him. So those are the types of things we got to, you know, think about. And there's a couple things you can do to, you know, kind of alleviate that situation and get confidence with that. And that's knowing, you know, when uh, to really focus on the runner and when not to. So real quick uh, tip is, You know when you're trying to, say you got the hitter down in the count and you've done a good job of holding that runner on so far, that first at bat, and you know you got the guy down with two strikes and you want to throw a curveball in the dirt or something like that or a change up where you want him to chase. So if the runner runs on an off-speed pitch, his success rate increases that he's going to be safe on that stolen base. So you have this in mind, and some people call it protecting your pitches, um, I just think of it as, hey, you know, I don't want this person to steal. I want to throw a curveball and get this guy out at home. Uh, so that's when you might want to say, all right, I'm either going to throw over a couple times or I'm going to really hold and hold for a long time and make this runner uncomfortable. It also can make the hitter uncomfortable as well. Uh, maybe you force them to step off or something like that. But it's just not coming back with that same timing. One 1,000 pitch. One 1,000 pitch. Because if you're throwing slow, uh, uh, say it's an off-speed or a change-up, and the runner's got you timed and he's able to get a good jump, 
your catcher has no chance. So we want to make sure, because in all honesty, we cannot prevent stolen bases, but we can help our catcher, you know, throw guys out uh, by giving them the best chance possible. Now, other than knowing the pitchers are throwing and knowing the runner, if he's fast or not, you also have to know, you know, that if this guy is going to run, you want him to run on the pitch that you want him to run on. So when you're throwing a fastball, say you're trying to get a guy to chase on a fastball high, that's almost like a pitch out or you know the guy's running and you just want to make it easier on your catcher. That's another little tip to know is, hey, you know, actually I'm really good on my fastball high to get the, the hitter to chase, so let's do that now because the runner might be running. And that gives your catcher a better chance to throw him out. So knowing the situation is huge uh, when it comes to close games and knowing that you cannot give up a base. Um, whether it be for you know a dink hit or just allowing that runner to advance on sack flies and stuff like that. So that's tip number one. Number two, we want to talk about you know which I think is the most important, and that's mixing up your looks. So this is kind of what I learned because what we're going to talk about later and, and making making sure your time to the plate is quicker. I wasn't very good at making sure my time to the plate was fast because I was a, a hard thrower and I like to have a big leg kick. So this was this was a challenge for me, uh, but I would I learned to mix up my looks towards the end of my career, and I didn't realize how powerful it was. But when you like say it's just for an example, if you ever played MLB The Show and you're controlling your runner, and you know you're trying to steal this base, but the pitcher is holding and holding and holding and taking forever, you kind of get antsy. Either you mess up and go, where then the pitcher can step off and throw you out. Or you just shut it down and say, I'm not, I, I can't do it anymore. I'm not stealing on this pitch. And you try to wait to the next pitch. That goes to show as a pitcher. If you're pitching, you know how effective that is if you've played the video game MLB The Show. So that's one big tip I would say is, is hold the ball. And don't be afraid to have the hitter or someone call time just because you're holding the ball. That makes everybody uncomfortable. And, hey, you can kind of, you know, what we'll talk about as a bonus tip, you can kind of set your other pitches up by either quick pitching or taking a long time to throw the pitch. So we'll get into that at the end. But um, So yeah, mixing up your looks uh, and making sure you have a good move to throw to first. You know, we don't want to just be lobbing it to first. We want the runner to know that we're serious and we see them, see them over there and we know they're there and we're going to try to keep them close. So mixing up your looks, um, the timing of your throws. So we have holding the ball and we have throwing over. If you can hold the ball for a long time, that'll, you know, get the, the runner to get flat-footed and, and shut it down. If you can throw over, that's great as well. So now you have three options, hold, pitch, or throw over. Now, the thing we want to do is mixing up the timing that we do this. And you guys have to remember that game time is way different than your practice time. If you're in a bullpen and you're working on these timings or you're just playing catch with a catch partner and you're working on these timings, you know, you counting 1,001, 1,002 when you're playing catch is totally different. When you're in the game, it's going to be like 1,001, 1,002. Just because your heart's pumping, the game's going, you got adrenaline, adrenaline. So you want to make sure you're really, really, you know, cognizant and intentional about how long you're holding. So just for an example, what I would like to do is if I have a fast runner on and I know it's a situation where I do not want him to steal, I would just, I would come up. 1,001, 1,002, throw over. I didn't throw over that much, but I would throw over. Then come back set, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, hitter calls time. Now everybody's a little uncomfortable, okay? So maybe I want to throw a change up this next pitch, and this is the bonus tip. Then I would come here and I'm in my mind like, okay, I get the sign, get my change up. I'm throwing as soon as I come set. Boom. Then you throw. So the hitter's kind of sped up after you just waited this long time. So he's kind of out in front of the change up and the runner's not ready. He's assuming you're going to hold. So then you get away with that pitch. Uh, now this is the time where you, okay, I got this hitter down, you know, and I really want to strike him out and I want to bury this. And uh, that's when you want to make sure, hey, I'm going to throw over a lot, make sure this runner is, is not going because I have this breaking ball and I really want to, you know, throw it down in the dirt. So that ties back into to tip one. But just know, you know, 
having a, a pitch that you want to make sure you can get to uh, with the runner on, you want to make sure that that runner's not running. And then when you're, when you're mixing up your looks and you're throwing over, there is no, there is no, uh, um, like, I guess, how I want to say this, there's no substitute for, for holding and getting a time. When you get a time, like when a hitter calls time and someone gets uncomfortable, I used to love that. And, and then quick pitching, hitters hate it. You can find on the internet right now, Marcus Stroman, quick pitching hitters and them getting frustrated. Sometimes the umpire gets frustrated. But literally, if you've ever had one-on-one -on -one lessons with me, you know one of the things I say is basically I ask the definition of a pitcher. Most people are, you know, are going down deep, but it's very simple, and that's just to disrupt the hitter's timing. So make that a point and be real intentional about that um, in your next season. So you can really work on not just saying, hey, okay, I have to – hit this and nibble and hit the corners and throw perfect, you know, give yourself some slack and, and get into some less stressful situations by knowing how to control the run game. Now, tip number three, working on your time to the plate. This was a nightmare for me. Um, <laughs> the Phillies always wanted us to be at least 1.3 seconds or lower to the plate to give our catchers a chance. And that was part of the reason I, I didn't uh, advance through the levels as, qu uh, as quickly as I wanted to because I, I, had a, I was a slow leg kick person, you know, and my mechanics were kind of slow. So um, it, was, it was a struggle for me. But uh, one thing, there's some tricks you can do where you maybe don't have your leg lift as high. Or it can go back into tip number two where you mix in a slide step where that can mess up the, the runner's timing and it can give your catcher a, a, a better chance of throwing that runner out. So if you, you know, sometimes a catcher like Roberto Perez would just give me a sign to slide step. So uh, I knew, okay, I'm slide stepping on this pitch. And, and having that in your arsenal is important, uh, especially if you can't make your normal mechanics and your normal uh, pitching motion 1.3 and under. Um, I would suggest just making it easy so you can have the same pitching mechanics every pitch uh, from when you're in the stretch is to work on getting your, uh, your timing down to 1.3. If you can do that consistently, it just alleviates a lot of the stress when runners get on. Um, the, the main goal is to get like outs. So if the people are going to steal, giving your catcher the opportunity to throw them out can just make your life easier. There's two things in my career that I realized. Being able to, to limit st uh, stolen bases and letting your catcher throw them out, it just makes the inning so much easier. And the other one is just throwing strikes, being aggressive, and you'll be surprised how many hitters you get out when you're not trying to you know, pinpoint pitches on the edges. And when you can attack hitters and force the issue, uh, you know, like they say, the, the best hitters hit 300. So seven out of 10 times you're gonna get out, you gotta play those odds. Um, yeah, so just a quick review. Know the situation. Know what pitch you're going to throw. Know what, you know, if your runner has got speed and, and know the, the, the timing of the game, the close game, know that, you know, I cannot let this runner steal. Um, you know, that's a little bit different than the rest of the game. So know the situation. Number two, mix up your looks. Throw over, hold, pitch. You know, differentiate the timings that you do all those three things. And you're going to find that, you know, there's, you'll, you'll, the control in the running game will be a lot easier. Um, one of the things I, I, I guess I looked at and really helped me with my confidence on holding was I saw a knuckleballer who was usually 1.7 to the plate, but held runners with the best of them. Didn't make sense to me at first, but then I started to watch him more and coaches started to tell me, hey, he mixes his timings up. So that's all that was. And, and tip number three, work on your time to the plate. I know it's, like I said, I wasn't the best at this, so it's kind of ironic that I'm, you know, telling you to do this, but um, it'll make your life easier if you are a 1.3 or lower. And if you're a young pitcher, then, you know, just start practicing that now. Don't be like me where you have a high, slow leg kick, and then once you're 26, you're, you're realizing that you have to uh, get a slide step or, you know, quicken up your mechanics because trying to change stuff once you've pitched for 20 years, 
It's not that fun. So, again, guys, I hope all these tips encourage you guys. And, uh, you know, I hope this helps you take the next step in your pitching journey. And um, remember to learn. Remember to crawl before we walk. And uh, I appreciate the feedback. Uh, I will be looking for more topics to uh, about pitching to uh, stream and make videos about. Um, and the 99 Miles Per Hour podcast show is still going strong. And um, we're focused on baseball. We just finished the episode with Jared Parker, who was the ninth overall draft pick. And we talked about NFTs and Web3. So we mixed baseball in with some technology and, and cryptocurrency. So it was pretty cool. Um, but also, if you have any questions or want me to make a video about something, comment section, comment section is always open. Okay? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next stream.